Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make what I'm going to call a loopy boutique bow and you're going to need six pieces of ribbon or 1.5 inch and you start with two pieces of 33 centimeters two pieces of 30 centimeters and two pieces of um, 27 centimeters and i'll me measure the back bow which i'm going to do as you can see here it is an overlapped pinwheel on the back instead of spikes because i prefer them personally and like i said this one's got a cute little reindeer felty on and it's got three different shades of um, brown. I think I've got old gold, um, golden brown and caramel. Um, but I'll put them in the description below. And this is a similar combination with a gingerbread man. Um, and again, like I said, I've done the pinwheel at the back, but you can do spikes. I'll put the measurements for both. And like I said, again, it's just different combination of the three colours. And I also did a two... loop version so there's only the one two loops instead of the three on the other but it's still just as cute so there's that one and again it's got the pinwheel overlapped base so there's that one like it's exactly the same principle as what i'm showing here only instead of having the middle layer of the 22 27 uh, centimeter pieces um you just take those out and do the exact same 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 so I will show you how to get started. So like I said, I have heat sealed all my pieces, both ends. There we go, just show you again. And in the middle, we're going to do a tiny crease at the top so we can line up our layers without creasing the whole bow. This will help it all balance out nicely. You do need dress pins for this one because um, it has to help you line everything up and keep everything all nice and get your loops all in centered. So for each of the six pieces, fold in half, make sure you've got dead center and all you want is just a little teeny 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 tiniest heat seal just in that top corner and repeat for all six pieces just like that just so you can see see the pinch without it actually affecting the whole bow okay so we'll flip those back out and like I said just do all, your, all six of your pieces And I have twin nieces, so I'm making them another so they can wear either the gingerbread or the reindeer without arguing. Because that's what twins are like. They either want to look completely different or have it everything exactly the same. And they can never decide on a day-to-day -day basis. And it started, well actually it's past Christmas making season, I'm a bit behind this year. I've only just finished my Halloween to get a bit obsessed with making um, Nightmare Before Christmas stuff for myself and then get behind with my other ideas so like I said just each one of those and as you can see what I've done is I've already layered them on top of each other using that little inch there and that is what we're using to get them all aligned and the same here to get them all lined up make sure they're all straight and you can't see the overlap behind basically The straight all the way what you do where you got that crease from pin 
all layers. Pin all layers. Okay. So this is what you've got so far. Right. So take your piece like so. Like I said, make sure everything stays all nicely lined up. And what you do is slide that middle piece up so it matches the one beneath. So it's matching this one at the bottom because this is where you'll get your curves from. And then what you want to do is act for the same thing. Slide or pull it so it lines up so that all obby pieces are all together. And what I do to again make sure everything stays in alignment fold it in half so you get your middle like so and I pin while it's still folded so I know it's the centre and pin like so and you see how you've got your curves coming and you do exactly the same thing the other side pull it up Line it up with that one from the bottom and repeat. Make sure that they're all nicely overlapping. Fold it in half. Use your pin. Pin straight in the centre. Ready? Just make sure I've got. Yeah. So with your pin facing towards you so it's up overlap so that you pin so that pin and that pin are overlapping and then what you do again this will help you get your centre fold it directly in half like so take a third pin Put that right through the centre again, so you know it's right in the middle. And pin through all your layers. Okay, so you get this shape. Then what you do is, this is for guidance, like I said, these pins are for to help you keep everything centred and stop your loops from going like to the left or the right um, and sitting uh, in, funny sh in funny positions. So... Take your pin, line it to that centre one that we've just done, and your loops will look like so. This is the back. Okay. Try and get it. And that is the front okay and like I said you line it up with that pin below take your top pin out use that one pin all your layers and do make sure you capture all your layers watch yourself I told you I was accident prone that's my scar from a few weeks ago glue gun explosion and I also use these other pins to make sure, like I said, I move them across because that will hold this line of you twisted up back area and your front. It stops your loops from slipping and it stops everything from going out of a alignment and like I said it's all about getting your stitches perfectly in place and getting your loops to stay exactly where they should be and you'll get a nice even shape and even loops on both sides and then we just repeat everything on this second piece so like I said slide up slide up make sure it's all in alignment fold in half And these are my favourite style of boutique-ish bows to sort of make because they're about, 
I've seen now about 10 similar-ish versions of these kind of things um, with just a few minor changes and you get quite a lot of really nice shapes. There's the wavy one, there's the overlaid, well, um, sorry, the wavy boutique, the overlaid boutique, this one will be called the loopy boutique, the exotic boutique, um, that's just the ones I've, I've remade so far but there is more and I will show you some more shortly so again hold that in half and pin that side and again you'll see nice wave shape on the inside like I said make sure your pin is up right over so your pins align Get your third pin, fold that in half so you've got it all evenly lined up like so. Third pin right through the centre of your fold and then through all your layers. So you get this, pull your pin up, align it directly with that pin from beneath take that one out use that bottom one one two pin through all layers line up your whole thing so it matches up perfectly with the edge of your shape need that pin like i said be careful not to stab yourself like i would well i'm being i won't jinx myself but i would normally have damaged myself by now so there you go that's your opposite side like I said that is the back that is your front with your nice loops and as you can see these will match up all nicely once they're stitched together and this is a an accordi a cordigan a cordigan then I can't pronounce certain words, I apologise. This is the three bump a cordigan crease. So like I said, most of these to make sure them sit nicely, you need the three uh, three bumps um, or creases, folds in the middle, and you get that by where your ribbon beneath directly lines up. You start there from above and you want one, two, make sure you get all of your layers from that first line, three, four, five, and five should be coming back up and you should be going through. You see here, we started there on the other side we're coming up through there on this last one. Okay. And I will show you. This will give you these three even. Can you see how even they are? Even bumps. If you can get them, if you can get your stitches right and you can get these even 99% of the time, the more even and the more in line they are the better your bows will sit and sort of align and sit together nicely and the, they will sit flat to the table as they should do and things like that so it's a really good skill to sort of develop and, and get because once you've mastered it it will make so many of your bows look a thousand times better than you originally thought they could and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back through there all the way make sure you capture in all your layers there we go so I'm gonna go back once so I've got all of it and I always keep pin ins, pins in while I'm doing this so it doesn't slip or anything like that and then I go back the other way like I said use your desk to get your needle 
all the way through. Right, so we've now got that crease so I can take all my pins out on this side. Okay, and what I'm going to do while that's still in there, I'm going to keep going and I'll show you how to make sure these sit nice and tight as well. And again, come from above, right as those layers meet from there to the top and you want all six layers so you want the three here and the three from beneath straight through one two your second should be going through all six layers of the next piece three is your middle fours down five is back up through the corner of that original piece, all six layers. Okay, I'm just going to double check I've caught all of mine because that is one of my favourite things to miss. And it's one of the loops, it's right, right around, so I'll just get that. So there's that one. And again, pull it as tight as you can to orig your original piece. And there's my bumps on that side, can you see? And what I do, again, keep your pins in a minute. Go back through. All three. Use your desk if you must. Nice and tight again. Just caught that one. Pins out. Last one back through. There we go. Just managed it. So, like I said, now you've got your two. And they will line up as you can see. Use my my head there. Can you see how nicely? And same in the back. All nicely lined up. Those bits are already ready to sit nicely against table in a minute. And what I also do is take it through through all the bumps on the other side again. Now, if it's easier for you, you can make these in two pieces and stitch them together. I just like to do these cinched circular ones because to me, they just feel more secure. But like I said, it's whatever works best for you. And if you want me to, I can show you both, both ways. Just a little bit frayed there, so I'll just sort that out. Pop that through there. I'm going to do a couple of stitches just in the back to stitch that together completely. Okay, so just through there. One, two, there we go. So that's back. And what I like to do is the middle piece is perfectly lined up bumped up okay so what i do is from beneath go straight up through the middle through all your layers one side and the other side and there you go and that will not move that will be completely solid I do one last back stitch. So when you go to wrap your centre, it won't sort of, some of them, if you don't do that, they sort of pull apart. So like I said, it just gives it that nicer, nice, secure feel that I feel most comfortable with. Just snip that off. Let me do that in a second. So there you go. 
like I said, not half as complicated as it actually looks, and look how pretty that is. I'm going to make this in some more bright, fun colours than these browns once I've done my gingerbread and uh, reindeer ones. Look at that. And as I said before, I'm a fan of a pinwheel base. Um, you can do spikes, like I said, it's entirely up to you. I'll do the measurements for the spikes as well if you want those instead. Um, because like I said, whatever you like personally. And like I said, the best thing about these, and like I said, when you see these tutorials, you don't have to follow them exactly. You can make them your own. And like I said, that's the very best thing about ribbon making. You, you can twist any of these and make whatever you want from them. In fact, my favourite way to learn how to make new bows is play around with these styles and twist things backwards and forwards and see what kind of shapes it gives me. Instead, see if I can make something completely new. And that's how most of these sort of ideas are being come up with. So play around if you want to. Once you get a bit more competent with the styles, it's, it's fun. Like I said, it's one of my favourite even changing out your, your, your base bows, um, like I said, you could do a double tux under there, you could do a simple simple bow, you could do a giant tux bow, you could um, do five spikes instead of three or four or even six if you really wanted to. It's all, all about what you want. So as I said, I was going to actually measure this for you rather than just wrapping. Like I said, I've got a five inch template, mine are wooden. I have got a tutorial up on how to make your own um, sorry, your own uh, paper cardboard ones. I just had my tape measure right in front of me. And now it is nowhere to be found. Ah, floor. Typical. And now I think I've just found my friend my needle. And I thought I was going to be able to get through a whole tutorial <laughs> without being my normal accident prone self. So for a five inch template overlapped, you will need 70 centimetres or 27 inches. So let's repin this and then I'll see if I can find where I've just thrown my needle then. It's on my on my knee. That's good. I didn't didn't have to go searching under my desk, which I won't admit it is a semi regular thing for me. There we go. Make sure I've threaded it off. I have. So as you can see, wrapped it like this. This is your back. A little bit either side for cutting down. And you want it just a little bit overlapped. You need sort of half a, less than half a centimetre all the way around the front. So let me just pull that up because that's a bit uneven. And we start from below. One. I'm determined within the next month I will make a tutorial where I haven't forgotten my nine mil the other side of the room or I haven't forgotten my clip or I've not dropped my glue gun or stitch through <laughs> the wrong area of ribbon but like I said I do leave all of these mistakes in because we're all learning and I show you how to fix everything which I think is just as useful as learning how to make things perfectly because it means you can fix any mistakes that you might make as you're making them and that is just as useful more so in some cases than just making everything perfectly all the time I do have a Facebook page under the same name as well and I am tiny at the moment, but I'm getting there. 
and if you've got any questions whatsoever or need any help on anything or you've watched it and you don't quite understand how to do something anything like that feel free to either message me on here or join the group and facebook message me i have no i don't mind either i will always get back to you as fast as i can and i will help you as much as humanly possible so wrap that all around since you love it take my clips off slide it down and keep everything between your fingers like so and just keep pulling like that until it's completely cinched and I always give it a nice little pull like that because it gives you shape okay and trick for you if you're first starting out is can you see there that the pinwheel naturally wants to curve always have the the back the sides that's nat naturally curving because it will sit better to the person's head that's wearing the bow actually unstitch that so i'm gonna do curved because that's my favorite thing to do on these base bows just a gentle curve round on the tail and seal this and felt is one of my favorite things to use because they're one of the easiest things to glue on nicely and not worry about ever having them fall off because the felt sticks to the ribbon really really well they tend to be reasonably cheap and you can get so many pretty ones i get mine this is from a christmas bundle from last year because i didn't get i didn't do many christmas things last year um they did a really good mix of reindeers gingerbread men snow santa claus and something else i've forgotten off the top of my head candy canes red and pink candy canes and reindeer antlers with uh, different colored noses um, and they were all super super cute so what i'm doing is i'm using that taking my needle straight through the base there and this is how i make mine all line up nice and evenly because with my dyspraxia which is a learning um challenge um it basically means my depth perception can be a little bit off so when i was making bows when i first started um all of them tended to be a little off to the left so i found if i do this method by making sure that the needle is going through the center of the base bow and the connecting bow and then wrapping it stops them from slipping from one side to the other and it sort of helps it um sit um, more centered so okay just miss that slightly so just move that there we go so that's right through the center i'm just going to pull that through and i'm going to make sure everything is sat exactly how i want so we want the tail there and there and then we wrap round just a couple of times and again this for me is just extra security if you're doing bubbles instead of clips now would be the perfect time to sort of wrap the bubble in and then wrap your middle round because again it will be an extra bit of security to keep that bubble completely within the bow and it's not going to pop out or um, unravel or anything like that so we do just do one back stitch the back and these won't move once they're done like this it would take somebody extremely strong to sort of take that apart so see which one of my glue guns wants to play today i've got both on in case one's not there we go Touch your glue. Perfect. Does want to play today? There we go. Touch your glue right on the centre. Turn this over. I want that right on that middle bit there. And I don't know which one. 
do the caramel nine nine them heat that touch of glue there pop open your clip get it right on the center where you've got your join here in the middle and I wrap at least twice, if not three times, depending on which bow style it is. It's going to pop a bit of glue just on there. Not too much because you don't want it to sip it CP the side of your the middle. There we go. So that's one. And then open your clip again. I have a time or two uh, not open my clip and gone to glue it that's always a fun one so just round your back cut off make sure you're not cutting your uh, bow underneath because again that's another thing i've done before a little bit of glue here just there like I said, don't be afraid to adjust your bow and make it sit exactly how you like it. So there you go. There's that. That's very cute just by itself, as you can see. That's your back. That's the front. There we go. Place it further away. And I will add, I think on this one, the reindeer felty. And like I said, this is how easy gluing these is. You just want a dot right in the centre. Just give it a little bit of a rub with the tippy glue gun. And then secure that right where you want it on your bow. With all your glue stringers, if you're anything like me. And there you go. That is one loopy boutique bow. Like I said, any questions, put them in the comments. I'll answer them as soon as possible. Thanks, bye.